You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler, and today my guest is Roxy Lebson. Now, Roxy's from an organisation called Bare Hands, and we're just about to ask her what it's all about. Hello, Roxy, and welcome to Health Professional Radio. Tell us what Bare Hands is all about. Hi, Wayne. Thank you for having us today. What we are is resilient strategists and educators. So our whole focus is on providing educational products around early intervention, so to minimise depression, anxiety, stress and all its related illnesses. So our whole purpose is to help people have the skills that they need for resilience and to be able to build compassionate and sustainable relationships. So we put all of our years of clinical experience and all the tools that we've seen work in the real chaotic world of families into life strategies and educational products that people can access. Currently, our focus is on helping mums because we see these as as being the key people to turn the tide on the stress epidemic and really to looking at how do we stop this epidemic of depression that we're facing. And we think really mums are the key to that. If we can catch mums, skill them up, give them coping skills, and if they can teach that to their kids and teach their kids resilience, and hopefully we can future-proof generations to come from depression because we really think that, you know, if we can have kids having contented, calm and happy childhoods, then we're going to create a better generation. An admirable goal, Roxy. Now let me ask, where are you located and what geographic footprint do you service? We're located in Brisbane, but our geographic footprint, our goal is if we can get resources into every single family home in the Western world, any English-speaking home, then we'll have done our job. So it, it's a, um, a service that would translate quite happily um, around the world in the English-speaking world. Absolutely. That's the whole point of our products is because, you know, we need resources out there. People need to be able to get their hands on quality education, so definitely. Now, you've been talking about uh, resilience and depression We hear a lot about depression. Is there an epidemic of depression underway? Absolutely. It's severe. Um, You know, I was thinking prior to our conversation this morning what motivated me to start this whole journey. And it was interesting. I was reflecting back to a particular day in clinical practice because I'm a healthcare practitioner. And there was a day about three years ago when I'd seen my third child for in as many weeks. And this little boy came in. His mum brought him in. He was nine years old. And his mum brought him in and he said to me, I want to kill myself. I've thought about hanging myself from my bunk bed with my school belt. And he was the third child I'd seen in as many weeks. Now, I hadn't seen that in all of my years of clinical practice, not in children so young. And that is a reality and we're facing it ever increasingly. You know, I was talking to a friend literally last night and she's a teacher at a local high school She's been teaching for 25 years and I said to her, how's your week going? And she said, rotten. I said, well, what, what's going on? And she said, I heard at the beginning of the week that one of my ex-students, 25 years old, a beautiful girl, she said she took a life from depression and she said it was a good family. She said these are a loving family, they're incredibly devoted and she just couldn't cope with the depression. This is happening all around us. It's a daily event and it will be the biggest killer in the next few years. It's, it's crazy. I, I know that there's been a media policy for some years now of not publicising uh, suicides, particularly youth suicide, but I'm of the view it's uh, such a big problem now it's time we started talking out loud about it. I think we have to. I think we have to be real about what's going on. I Yes, there's two ways of looking at it. You don't want to make it trendy or you don't want to incite that sort of action and so we have to be very, very careful and mindful about what sort of information we're putting out to public viewing. But I think we have to be real about how bad this problem is. It really is going to be the biggest thing as clinicians that we're facing and going to have to treat. But the problem is most people aren't seeking help. See, the reality is I know that I'm likely to see only 10% or less of the people that really need help through my clinical practice. So how do we get out there and actually get information available that's going to stop it at its earliest point? That's the whole purpose of what I'm about. You're listening to Health Professional Radio with Wayne Buckler. I'm in conversation with Roxy Lebson from Bare Hands. And Roxy... 
a little while ago on the interview, you spoke about resilience, and I'm curious to understand what resilience is in your context and how you go about improving it. To my mind, resilience is having buffers. It's, you know, when you have a challenge come at you or you have life happen or you have the chaos around you, how do you buffer yourself and stay integral to the things that actually matter? Living out of a value-based system, living out of compassion, living out of your integrity and being able to communicate that or be and behave in such a way that you actually build long-term, sustainable, healthy, compassionate relationships. So fundamentally, I think, how do we first of all understand ourselves and where we're coming from and what matters and live in accordance with that? And then how do we feel comfortable enough communicating that and behaving in a way that engages with people so that we model that? And if we can model it, then we teach it. And that's what I'm passionate about. You know, if you can get mothers modeling good coping skills for themselves, actually looking after themselves first, and then showing their kids that, you know, you can actually have a life that you want to live, then start communicating and conflicting in a way that's positive and that actually builds connection and builds compassion, then we have resilience. Now, Roxy, a lot of our audience work in hospitals as clinicians. What message would you like to get across to them? The message I'd like to get across to them is that there are resources out there. You know, if As practitioners, we can compile our knowledge and actually start using the resources that we're all creating and getting it to be common knowledge and getting people accessing those resources, then we start to make a difference. If we can actually get in early, start teaching early, getting people seeking help before they're in crisis mode, that would be my goal. See, at the moment, we're looking at a mental health crisis where people are, we're so focused on late intervention. How do we catch people at the, the very end when they're in, already in breakdown? What about if as a healthcare cohort, we look at, well, how do we stop the breakdown? What's the earliest point of intervention and how do we start getting that out as a resource into the community? Because that's where healthcare really starts. Not from the latest point, but from the earliest point. If we want long-term results and long-term health change, we need to start earlier. It's too late when we're already in crisis. Very true. Now, Roxy, one of my favourite questions, what's the greatest misconception amongst uh, your peers, patients, um, customers, cohort, that drives you nuts and keeps you awake at night? The thing that drives me nuts is that it doesn't have to be such a struggle and yet we keep allowing ourselves to make it a struggle. If we would only you know, overcome those three big hurdles, you know, first of all, admitting that when we need help, there's help there and actually being able to be vulnerable to access it and to have affordable resources out there and to put ourselves first and put that education first. But the thing that drives me nuts most of all is that mothers are struggling. They really are. You know, they spend $20,000 or more a year on stuff to help them feel good, like beauty therapy, like massages and those sorts of things. That's not going to change the long-term results. We need to start spending money on things that are actually going to make a difference and I believe that's education. I really believe it starts with education first. So can we somehow take away the struggle, start putting education first and start actually changing our future in a way that's going to create a positive impact? That's, you know, it drives me nuts that we're not accessing education, that we'll, we'll buffer ourselves with all of this instant gratification. It's not changing things. Now, speaking of education, how can people get hold of you? They can get hold of us at barehands.com.au on our website. We've got a range of resources there. So we've got free weekly blogs. We've got online programs. We've got a resilience strategy program for child educators and clinicians that they can give to their clients as a strategy around stress busting and building resilience a whole range of resources. So please hop onto our website and check it out, www.barehands.com.au. And that Bare Hands is spelled B-A-R-E-H-A-N-D-S. So the reason we called it Bare Hands, because you think, oh, is that massage? No. We actually believe that people within themselves are already enough, and if we can just join together and provide education to start spreading compassion and knowledge, that will make a difference. A goal that I hope is very successful for you and for all of us. Roxy Lebson from the Bare Hands Group, thank you for your time this morning. 
A transcript of this interview is on our website at www.hpr.fm and there's a SoundCloud archive as well. This is Wayne Buckler for Health Professional Radio.